Greetings travelers, adventurers and fellow keepers of the lake. Welcome to the character creation. There are two types of uh, character building here. Well, kind of. Uh, the first one is the template. You have a couple of templates here. Uh, let me just find them real quick. There you go. So I don't know if you can see this, but uh, you basically have some archetypes, which are like the soldier, the adventurer, the sage, the smith, the cleric, the hoodlum. Ho hoodlum, I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Um, there are also prompts, as you can see, which will help you generate the backstory and what you're equipped with and all that, just to make jumping into the game much easier. So, for example, I rolled a... If I weren't dyslexic, I would say if this is a 6 or a 9, but let's say it's a 9, so I'm a towering human, equipped with um, a lightweight cloak and, a, and quiet boots. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's uh, the run-of-the-mill generating a character backstory goes. So... Other than that, you have custom characters, so basically you would skip all this. I mean, you can still use the prompts to um, to generate your background, but as someone building a custom character, you would go through these steps to create the character. I would probably put a zoomed-in version of this somewhere around here, I don't know. Basically, you get 50 points to start with, and you would be spending them and choosing like uh, your gear and abilities and all that to progress. Also, you can always make characters with even less points. Like, uh, for example, in Dark Souls, when you start as a naked guy, well, that would be zero points. So you would just start as a nobody and build up from there, which can be an interesting exercise for some. You would get your starting points then you would choose uh, one of the flaws. The flaws basically help you visualize your new character and what its what its weaknesses are. So they basically imply uh, some like history and they drive believable roleplay. You can take uh, the maximum of two flaws at creation and the maximum of four in the character's lifetime and each adds five points to your total. So if you have 50 points and you take a flow, then you have 55 points. Yeah, that's a simple math, I guess. After that, you would choose your uh, core ability. And this is a very expensive ability that costs 15 points. And this is something that will like be your uh, most useful mechanical aspect. And you cannot change this, so choose wisely. This is the thing that you get at character creation. And it's basically defining a big chunk of the mechanical properties of your character for the rest of the play. And then you would go and choose skills. How skills function, you... Uh, get skills you pump points into them basically uh, at the one to one ratio so a skill of six would be six points it would cost six points so you cannot go higher than 18 or lower than three you cannot for example spend one point to get a muscle skill you need to spend at least three when you get your skill uh, basically what the, the value i'm talking about means is if you spend three points then to successfully use that skill you need to roll below three. Warning, oh, not, 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 sorry. Warning, you cannot use a skill that you don't own. So for example, if you want to bend the bars, uh, metal bars on a cage and you don't have the muscle skill, you cannot use it. So you better take that muscle skill, I guess. Yeah, then you will go and buy equipment. Equipment is also buyed with hero points, more on that later. Side note, the maximum number of items you can hold in your inventory or skills that you can have is 10 so you cannot exceed this number at all during play and um, this is because your inventory and your skills are basically used as your hp more on that in the combat section now i know what you're thinking well i can just take a lot of little items and use them as hp well no every little item uh, goes into one inventory space called the pouch That was a good idea, wasn't it? Remember this one? Yeah, from the first video. Well, basically, why I wrote six is because you start with six as your basic defense. And when you add armor, you add to this value. So the equipped mar armor basically adds to this value. If you have two breastplates, one will be in your inventory as a backup, but only one that you're wearing will actually get this number up. And you can never have more than 18. Here I will show you some of the tables for gear. Right, so you can also make custom gear. Uh, you have one point, two point or three point gear. I would advise not doing this like for your first session. Uh, I would advise you do this 
uh, when you're a bit more familiar with the system. But if you have a certain like gear piece that you really want to have, see it with your GM. Maybe you can uh, you can come to an agreement and just pay maybe a couple of points more to have a custom gear piece for yourself. Of course, all the gear can be upgraded and you can upgrade it during play whenever you're in a safe space and this is my safe space. So whenever I am here, I can upgrade my gear. Wow, that even rhymes. The upgrading is just getting some like gear effects and limitations. So for each um, effect, you lose three points and for each flaw, you gain three points. Whenever you're upgrading gear, you need to be in a place that's not only safe, but has the proper tools or proper craftsmen to help you get the gear. You would then uh, buy customize or scratch build spells. This is one of the biggest uh, selling points for me uh, for this game as the point buy uh, system for buying spells is so in-depth yet so simple that um, it deserves a video of its own. The path of magic for those who dare walk it. Uh, anyways, uh, then there is also support for companions. So if you uh, imagine yourself with like a, a pet ant or a pet uh, walrus, you can certainly do that. Right, let's talk companions. You can have like a small companion, a medium companion or a big companion. And they cost 3, 5 and 12 points respectively. Of course, uh, you would assume that these companions add actions to your uh, combat. Well, well, no, you act with them, off of them. They act on your turn and they do have their own damage and they, their own stats in a way and they're highly customizable but basically they are just an extension of your ability and not their own actors. Also customizing companions uh, which is well as you have already noticed by now you can add like some limitations you can add uh, upgrades during play and to add upgrades you need to be in the in the safe space and also like have have enough time to train them and of course as a step eight you would choose a lineage. So a side note for lineages, you can be human kin, which is a kin to human. They are versatile folk. They uh, are very good at being a human, I guess. Um, please pause and read the text. It is actually quite good. Uh, also, there is elven folk. As you can see here, they have a knack for magical. There is a stout folk, which is not to be confused with dwarfs and Proudfoots, which are uh, proud to have feet. Um, I'm, I'm joking, they're basically hobbits. And something that you didn't expect is there is actually Frogkin. What is a Frogkin? Well, it is, is it, it is these guys. And they are kind of like um, samurai type, uh, honor bound, um, violent empire, rogue type of race. And then you're done. You have your character. Why is this warning here? You have your character, so yeah uh, you're ready to play there is also a mode of uh, starting the game called the discovery so you don't remember anything you don't know who you are you don't remember uh, where you've been how you've came to be here and it's an interesting opening especially if you mix it with having uh, like zero or half of the starting points to create your character and of course uh, what is written here in the book be versatile, use it however you think uh, fits your group and your campaign that you've just started. Uh, you also have like um, a thing where you have only only one memory, only one thing that you remember and you start going off that. Maybe you have gear lying around or at some point after a bit of adventuring, you start to remember your name. I will not go in, in depth into this because um, it will take me a lot of time and this is aimed at like getting people up to speed as fast as possible. So yeah, that's it for character creation. I hope this is not too hectic for you. I hope this is not ripping off a fellow YouTuber, but this format really helps me like go through a lot of things fast and also I wanted to film this video today and I don't have any batteries in my main camera so yeah it is what it is thank you so much for watching Farewell.